So here's another question. In what ways can Christians model a healthy and authentic faith to those who've left the church? Yeah, so I think the key to that is to model a healthy and authentic faith while you're in the church, right? To just make this our normal practice. And I think one of the things that would really do us a lot of good is to just be more candid about our honest struggles and kind of the perplexities of the faith for us. Because, you know, I have a PhD in philosophy. I've been a pastor for like, or, you know, pastor, Bible professor for 40 years. And I have these puzzles that I still struggle with. Is that like some problem? Does that mean I'm not a good Christian? And I'm like, read the Bible. You, you pick up the book of Psalms and you have all the, how long, oh Lord, you know, Lord, what are you doing? Why do the rich prosper? And, you know, there's all these people asking all these questions. The book of Job, the book of Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah, man, he's, you know, we, we talk about him being the weeping prophet. He could be the whining prophet, the complaining yeah. prophet, the puzzled prophet. The, the I mean, he is just having a lot of troubles with his faith. And he's marching on. I mean, Jeremiah is not checking out, yeah. but boy, he is not a happy camper as he's yeah. marching down the road. So I'm like, why can't we be that way when we are that way? We don't have to drum it up. If we're feeling great, man, feel great. That's not a problem. But I think there's kind of a shame of having some real question or real struggle or real perplexity. And I'm like, boy, you know, you've got really good company from David to Jeremiah to Ezekiel to Isaiah to... I mean, who is it, uh, you know, that has not had some of those questions? And I'm like, yeah, we just need to be forthcoming and to say, you know, that beats me. One of the things I talk about to my students sometime is just saying, you know, the Bible calls you to be a witness to Jesus, not an attorney for him. Mm -hmm. And if you go to a courtroom, you know, they ask the witness, well, what happens? Said, well, this guy walked across the street and the car came from the other side and that's what happened. And, you know, well, why did he do it? And the guy's like, I have no idea why I did it. I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> that's what I saw. On chapter nine, they're asking the blind guy, you know, what, what happened? Well, I used to be blind and now I see. He said, well, you know, what did you do for him? He said, I don't know. I'm just telling well, you this is what happened. <laughs> so I think we get worried that, oh my gosh, if we don't, give a great closing argument, then something terrible will happen. And it's like, we're not the attorney. We don't give the closing argument. We just say, here's what happened to me. And sometimes say, God bless me in this way. Sometimes say, I have walked with Jesus for 40 years and I'm still puzzled by this. Yeah. And it can be wildly liberating to a person's having doubts about the faith to go, oh, this guy has doubts about the faith too. And it isn't just Rick, it's Jeremiah, right? I mean, it's, it's David. It's so many people. So I, I just would love to kind of wave a magic wand and, and say, guys, it's okay to have a hard time making sense out of life on this earth and to have a hard time sometimes figure out what God is doing in your life. That That's okay. And it's flamingly biblical. <laughs> um, it happens all the time in the Bible. <clears throat> so I, I'd I think that would be one thing we could really do in terms of modeling an authentic faith that we'd actually find really liberating on our own, right? This isn't a project. This would be like, oh, that would be really wonderful. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, that, that's a big one. Just to do for our own health and vitality. Yeah, By yeah. The way, I want to commend the fact that you use the word flaming to uh, describe biblical. That was perfect. That was good. <laughs> That's so good. Well, and I think, you know, as you say that, Rick, I'm convicted as you're saying that because I, I, I have those same crisis, faith, doubt, no doubt. But I think the problem is sometimes as pastors, as Bible professors, you, you would say, and you've demonstrated the contrary. I don't know that we always share that. And I don't know that yeah. it's always because I'm not even willing to, I'm too private. I just don't maybe even think about it, but that modeling probably happens at those leadership roles. Cause those, cause I think I've had those conversations, people in our congregations like, Oh, you too. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm just so sad. You didn't know that. Cause I, yeah. I should have been more forthcoming should have been more just transparent about <clears throat> some of the things I am working through or have worked through because that does give the right kind of permission to what people already are feeling. But I think you're right. It, it almost, not only do we need to do that, but we're probably not modeling it well in, in the roles that people look up to and are trying to learn from. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Now, a lot of the things that happen to us um, in our difficult times and struggles with God are a test of our heart 
and we want to treat them like they're a test of our mind. <laughs> so we finally want to find a mental solution to this. And God is actually doing something on our heart. He may be wanting to loosen misguided affections. We're, we're loving good things, but we're loving them in the wrong rank ordering. <laughs> we're loving the wrong thing too much. And so he does things to, to, to readjust our, our heart, so to speak. And we want to process them in our head because the head's a lot cleaner and a lot easier. It's and true. the processing in the heart, honestly, is probably the most important thing. And again, that'd be a great thing to be able to just model as a kind of, kind of normal church life. Yeah. We're a set of people who, whose hearts are, are not always, uh, we, we sing a songs that plead that you would bind our wandering heart to thee, Lord. That means that we don't think that happens automatically. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, we feel the tension. So, yeah. That's, that's so rich, Rick. Thank you. That's just, I'm so excited for our people to hear that explanation.